Welcome to our lecture online and here's another very interesting example of special relativity. Now let's go to the laboratory. This is for real. We have all kinds of experiments that we do in laboratories with accelerators and let's assume that we deal that we're dealing with muons here, positive muons. They tend to be very radioactive particles that decay in a very short amount of time. So typically uh, after a, a muon, a positive muon is created in a, for example, a big collision, the time that they exist is about 2.2 times 10 to the minus 6 seconds, which is 2.2 millionths of a second. So they don't hang around very long before they, they change radio, radioactively. But let's say that in the laboratory, a particle, a muon, is created and is moving at 0.9 C. So how far would that particle travel and how long would that particle exist before it decay? Because it's now traveling at a very high velocity. So we use our time dilation equation. We can say that the time that this particle will exist as observed by the person in the laboratory is equal to T sub naught divided by the square root of one minus V square over C square. And of course, since gamma can be said to be one over the square root of one minus uh, V square over C squared, if we figure out what gamma is and we plug it in here, we can write time equals to gamma times T sub naught. So let's find out what gamma is in this case, when the speed is 0.9 c. So this would be equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus 0.9 c quantity squared divided by c squared. Of course, the c's cancel out, and so that's equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus 0.9 squared. And let's see here, my calculator will let us know how much that is. So 0.9, we square that, we subtract that from 1, take the square root of that, and take the inverse, and it looks like gamma is equal to 2.294. We plug that in here, so we can say that T is equal to 2.294 times T sub naught, which is the time that exists when it's at rest. And so now you can see that that particle, when it's moving really fast, will actually exist longer in the laboratory and therefore be able to travel farther. So uh, that times 2.2 e to the 6 minus equals, so this would be 5.047 times 10 to the minus 6 seconds. So a positive muon, uh, if, if it's created and moving at 0.9 c, will, will last more than twice as long before it decays. Now, if this was the time that it decayed, how far would the particle travel in the laboratory? And we can, of course, say that distance equals velocity times time. And, of course, the rest mass, if we did not take into account relativistic effects, so the distance would be the velocity, which is 0 0.9 times the speed of light, times the rest time. And I should put rest time here, like so. And so this is 2.2 times 10 to the minus 6 seconds. And if we calculate that, let's see, 2.2 e6 minus times 0.9 times 3 e to the 8, because of course the speed of light is 300 million meters per second. And so we get distance is equal to 594 meters. So what we can say here is if there were no such thing as relativistic effect, if time did not matter when for something moving really fast, then the total distance a particle could travel in the lab would be a distance of 594 meters before it would decay and turn into a different particle. But because of the relativistic time, we can actually see the particle traveling farther than it was supposed to. So what we can then say is that d is therefore equal to v times t. v is 0 0.9 times c times the time that will exist, 5.047 times 10 to the minus 6 seconds. And uh, so let's do that. 5.047 e to the 6 minus times uh, 0.9 times 3 e to the 8 equals, and actually the particle will travel a distance of 1,363 meters before decaying. Now this is something that's actually been observed in the atmosphere. Particles coming in into the atmosphere will, will travel through the atmosphere a certain distance, and depending upon how fast they're moving, the faster they move, the farther they will travel before they decay. So it's something we've actually observed. But that's how we adjust for real-time situations or real-life situations with radioactive particles travel, lasting longer and traveling farther than you expect them to if special relativity was not the case. And that's how you do that.